so welcome to another and quite unexpected captain's blog, at least not by me, who only booked this about 24 hours ago. But nonetheless, while I'm still putting out captain's blogs from my previous visit, we are on the broads again. It's Friday the 28th of uh, April and it's the beginning of the bank holiday weekend. We've had some wind and rain, but now I'm here, obviously, the sun is shining. But... I'm on a bathtub. Bronze Gem 2. Yes. But I want to talk to you about this because I've been on them before. San Salino, Salerno. Regular blog viewers will know. I'm a member of their budget boating review. Well, I'm back here because it's a budget boat. And it's quite nice, actually. I know I've said before that, you know, people who own bathtubs and hire them, etc., you know, what a Poor people that are down there, can't see out, can't see over the reeds. That's kind of true, and it kind of falls apart when you get going along in one of these boats, but when you're just sort of on it, they're rather nice. They're spacious, they're practical, they're kind of cosy. And having come from Brink Serenade, which is like the pinnacle of new build and technology and amazement, and in down to Bronze Gem 2, where it hasn't even got 240 volts, and I'm having to use the good old accessory lighter socket and rummage through my old boat box for the old 12 volt accessories and stuff like this, it's actually not too bad. I'm going to give you a little insight, it's not the boat review, that will be coming though, and explain a few things. First of all, so today's Friday, it's day one, you know, first day's on the boat, it's all about getting underway, unpacking, blah blah blah. I'm on my own again. But tomorrow Sheila's coming up, so I've got to be in Roxham for 12 to meet her. She has no idea what she's let herself in for going for this boat. I quite like San Remo, a sedan style boat. She didn't like the car and she didn't like sitting opposite the galley and the sink and everything else. So she's never been on a bathtub. We'll see how she feels. I don't think she's going to like it. She's going to be like, oh. but we'll see. She's not going to like it when she says, what do you mean I can't plug my hairdryer in? Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's have a little look through the boat and just see what it's about. So this is a little bit of behind the scenes. So when I first get on board the boat, here are my two major boxes. This is all my camera gear, batteries, 4G dongles. There's a couple in there. This boat's got 4G as well, but they're my main stuff to get out. Then we've got here, first thing of interest, it's got a variable thermostatic Espasha hot air heating system. Brilliant. It's got a really nice, better than in the pictures on the website, proper couch. Look at that. Hey. I've got to say, when you're not moving and you're not worried about seeing outside, it's really nice. Dinky little telly, but separate DVD player, radio, that's your switch for that. Then you've got your Wi-Fi over here, just switch that on. It's EE, meh, yeah, it's debatable. New nanny engine! I was thinking, oh, I'm going to go back to having the old BMC, but no, it's got a nanny engine. I've got me um, tab, and this is Ulysses speed ometer app i was going to mention it before i have to try and remember to go through this i'm not very used to um android guys i'm an apple boy uh but i'm getting used to this this was off of ebay it's just like a 60 80 quid i'm not sure what it was it's a lenovo tab it's got gps and it does all i need it to do so it's cheap it's not an ipad this here goes up to here which is the radio um broad ambitions about howard co-owner is on that this weekend and as you can see from down here down here it's quite interesting you have actually got a really good view this is Richardson's I'm just taking the boat over they've just done me walk through and everything so let's just have a quick look this isn't a review but big shower you get on bathtubs you don't get this on other boats really yeah it's a bit 1980s but hey ho there's the nanny engine nice I quite like it though. It's like 318 quid plus fuel and damage waiver. Can't complain, can you, for the weekend? Gas hob, don't know why it's here near the, the other cabin and not there, but hey ho. But look at all this proper worktop space. It's two berths, so we've got here, I've just got all my luggage and stuff in here. Stupid idea getting one of these new cases and four wheels. You try using that on the underground when the train stops and it rolls off down the carriage and pisses everyone off. Anyway, proper double berth. 
coming out here. Another double berth. And here, just a dinky toilet on its own, not even a shower or a basin. But around here, you've got your basin. So you're kind of self-contained in this little cabin. It is orange. Yeah. So anyway, I've just basically unpacked and arrived here. So I'm going to be getting the old girl started and getting used to being low down and no hydraulic steering and an old Morse throttle control. And you know what? I'm more excited about getting back to basics and being down here on a good old Rico's boat than if this was like, you know, 1200, 1500 quid boat that I paid for. It's nice actually to realize what the Broads is about and boating and making a bit of do and you know and yeah so it's an orange bathtub but you know there's so many people out there that can't literally you can't afford the sort of stuff that's being produced Faircraft Loins have just brought out this massive 46 foot long fair entrepreneur it sleeps four people and yet it's fully booked so of course people are spoiling themselves but it's a very very expensive boat and it's lovely and it's got proper flushing toilets and island doubles and everything else but if you just want to come up because it's sunny and you want to spend the weekend on the broads and you're on a budget and you say look we've got 350 quid what can we find that's where Richardson's really does do some great stuff so Everything's here that you need to look after yourself, cook for, fridge, all the rest of it. The only thing is, I mean, it is a bit low down. So everything, other than ducks, swans and other bathtubs, do appear a bit like, Christ, bloody hell, it's a hole approaching me. So it's a bit different having a bathtub. And remember guys, it's back to basics with the handling. No bow thruster, can't see the back of the boat. I'll try and explain why that's not too much of an issue. Because as long as you can see the side of the boat and get your head out, you're all right. Because you can just go, oh, there's the back of my boat. There's the front of my boat. Left, right, I'm good. It's just when boats overtake you and you have no idea they're coming and you go, oh, bloody hell, there's a boat next to me. Anyway, where are we going? I ain't got a clue. All I know is I've got to be at Roxon tomorrow for 12 to meet Sheila. I've got enough shopping on board to cook for myself tonight. I thought it was going to be bonkers busy. Guy here at Rico says there's 28 boats going out today. So it's not going to be that busy. Apparently there's always a lull after the Easter holiday. So um, moorings could be plentiful. Pub moorings. Oh, it's good to be on the broads again. And I might even meet up with Broad Ambition and Howard. He knows I'm about. I don't know where he is, but he knows I'm about. So, you know, I was going to say something bad then, but I won't. <laughs> um, but anyway, no, I was, I was going to say, I maybe I'll put one of my blue fenders on his bow. Mm. Anyway, let's get underway because the time now is 20 minutes past two and um, at least I want to leave the boatyard. That would be nice. So um, anyway, more as it happens. Okay, so um, just to let you know, we just left Rico's. Uh, down there is the dike that leads to Stanham Stay. Then ahead of me are ooh, three boats, perhaps. They're all just out on their trial runs and they're all doing their sort of, you know, down the river, turn around and come back. Um, so yes, there are four boats. And um, I'm down in here. And the first thing that you'll see now is when you're going along is passing by the um, other boat's bow, which is way up here. So, um, yes, the rascal is about one of Rico's staff there, just sort of thinking, oh Christ, he's on one of our boats now. <laughs> um, so yeah, what does it, what's it, it feels really strange. I can't explain it. Um, it's a bit like driving a bus. Now, I, I've never driven a bus, but Simon, who's my mum's husband, um, he drives buses. And I'm sure if he was sat here, he'd say, do you know what? This is just like an Enviro 400 or something. Because you're so far forward and you have so much behind you um, that there is a real sort of tricky perspective to, to understand. There's a lot of boat back there um, and you're low down. Um, now, couple that, for example, with the fact of, let's say, steering and throttle response. Um, what's that like? Well, 
steering wheel is quite small it's not hydraulic so you get a lot of feel you can really feel as you turn it um, the water flowing over the rudder unfortunately hello hey! <laughs> moon enterprise yes sorry I didn't catch you but you saw me and we waved I'm talking about you're on a fine vessel there you and your hydraulic steering and me if I take my hand off the wheel it spins to ball but anyway yes um, so it's a it's a cable connection a bit like broad ambition um, unfortunately obviously the rudder on a, on a bathtub isn't the same as broad ambition you haven't got that immediate response so you turn the wheel and something will happen much the same as the throttle you'll do something with it it will move and the engine will respond at some point but um, you can never be quite sure how much and sorry about the spot here um, but anyway so yes it's interesting it's quite quirky and um, I, I'm being honest I'm not I'm not being too derisory about bathtubs I know that there are people out there who sort of think I am but I I've had them before I've been brought up on them I used to come on Caribbeans and Bermudas and Caribbean Majors and DC 30s and all this kind of stuff um, it's, but it is a, it's, an, it's just a weird experience even the way that when a boat goes past four miles an hour and their wash hits the hole the boat you feel it it goes boom 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 and if you're on the Bure at five mile an hour and you hit one it splashes up it does it's exciting so anyway um, I'm gonna see if I can spin the camera around so you can you can see what I see okay so tip to Robin when you spin the camera around don't spin it to the left and unscrew from the tripod mount anyway this is uh, the view it might not be quite lined up exactly um, but you might have the idea as we pass here that everybody else looks so much higher up than you there's a new phrase that's been developed called wave bombing it's where you wave at another boat and they don't wave back hello sir you see it's nice you wave oh here comes a splash look at that wait for it boom you feel it thrill the boat a little wash like that so if you want excitement on Braden water when it's not even doing anything much this is the boat to have on a serious note though you've got loads of outdoor space it's safe for kids elderly people as well they're not going to trip upstairs or you know I must admit though a lot of people do say you know these boats single floor level they're not easy to get in there's quite a step down into the forward well and quite a step down and through a narrow door um, in the in the stern access I mean if you're like me um, I said to the bloke at Rico's I said oh shit I didn't bring my wide load he said your wide load I said it's a narrow door here normally I have to have a stick on me I says wide load you know uh, to warn people but they are narrow to get through ah you see now that's what you do have to do every now and again you have to look out of the window and notice there's a pile of four boats behind you a bit like a caravan or a tractor so we're doing four miles an hour and I'm not going to speed up I'm just going to tickle along here and enjoy the ride more as it happens well they weren't patient so four mile an hour and here comes San Rafael and there goes my tablet I must get to Ludden Bridge I must get to Ludden Bridge so I thought I'd just give you an update as you can see we're still going along it's the river Ant, and we're not far from Ludden Bridge and the moorings there so um, there seems to be more blue sky and looking at my weather app this should continue over the weekend with no more rain thank goodness and basically broken sunshine it's going to be chilly at night but mild in the day um, so I'm making for Ramworth which is either very foolish and I'm going to get there and there's only mini space I might just mud wait you know 
I don't feel in any rush or need to go anywhere um, you know specifically maybe that's because I've just recently been on the broad so that kind of must see this must go there maybe it's because when I was last on the broads it was really quiet and I could just say oh I'm gonna go here and no guaranteed I'll be able to moor there so things change I really think that the issue the broads has got is this lack of mooring so when I was looking on hoe seasons uh, just as you do you know and I found this boat and it had some reviews and other you know boats from Richardson's and a lot of the reviews weren't so much about the boat or the boat yard it would be like we had a really lovely adventure maybe we will choose a slightly larger boat next time but the real problem was lack of moorings and someone else might say you know something else and you know getting anywhere where the pub was um, was tricky we didn't have food on the boat it was disaster you know so I think a lot of people especially that don't visit often think right okay we're going on the broads it's gonna be lovely blah 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 well let's just go to a pub we get the boat they go to the pub they can't more outside the pub shit I haven't got any food on the boat now what do we do where do we go and it's this stress and anxiety that then comes that even then other moorings that you might try for they fall and well then what do you do and there's not really a holiday where <laughs> you have that sort of anxiety you know normally on holiday you just decide what to do and you do it no not on the broads you might get to where you want to go but you might not now earlier in the blog we were overtaken at quite a stately speed of San Rafael and I said must make London must make London well look at that there he is He's made Ludden. So instead of being there now, like I have, having stopped off at um, Howe Hill, he probably got here about 40 minutes before. These Richardson's boats, um, what's this? Is this Commodore, Commander? I'm not sure, but they certainly certainly look good from the outside I'm not so keen on them inside I must be honest I think they could have used their space a bit more wisely with the actual size of boat um, and this is interesting to see Myro here on our port side obviously this is a Dutch um, steel boat can fold all of that screen down and everything and he's got under London Bridge and yet see going you know I'm not sure about owning a steel boat, I just worry, I mean it's bad enough with a wood boat but then you can just get a plank of wood and a steel boat, I'd just be worried about it rusting all the time or getting a ding and then rusting and whole plate thickness and you can't, you know, I know yeah you can weld over it but now of all of the materials of boats I prefer wood or GRP than steel. So here's Ludden Bridge fortunate that was a touch and go that we got underneath that wasn't it <laughs> so anyway just so you know where we are what's going on oh what excellent timing this dazzling light too comes around the bend what a stressful place this can be especially if it's um, windy and then like now he's had to uh, give way because there's a another boat just behind me but um, and then you get blown sideways and oh it's a joyful experience <laughs> so not very long and we'll be at the River Bure on a glorious day in my bus so just an update for you we will be shortly making our turn to port and heading down to Malthouse Broad 
where I believe in front of me a party on um, Brinks Ultima may be heading as well. Yes they are. So that's one less space may be available down there. Um, but we'll just have to wait and see. It is 25 minutes to 5 in the afternoon and um, it's been a very pleasant trip so far. It's strange talking to the camera where it is and remembering to look there and not up here. Um, ah, now the party on Brinks Ultima has now appeared to have made an emergency stop and is now reversing out of Ramworth Dam. So um, that's rather interesting. So they've decided not to go down there I presume, which is handy. So now, as you can see, we're on Ramworth Dam. Just put in a call to the engine room to take some revs off, and we will see what awaits us. I'm just going to make a couple of preparations when we come onto the Broad, in as much as opening some doors and getting some ropes ready. So, if there is a spot, I'm well prepared and can go for it rather than faffing around with ropes and so on and so forth. Excuse me, could you just, if you go against bronze emblem, then I'll be able to fit on here. Okay. Right, okay. All right. Um, I mean, I can... T right. Because I'm just on my own. So I'll, 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 yeah, if you are temporarily more here, that's what I mean. Yeah, no, 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 no. I, It's a voiceover, which on the captain's blog is a rare occurrence, so you know something special is going to take place. The hire is on the Hampton 25, they've kindly moved over and that gives me enough space to get in, so it's just a case to back out of the dinghy dike, turn the boat round and stir no more. No. What you're going to witness now is just how much you can cock up a stern moor evolution. I've done this countless times on all sorts of different boats and yet this just went on and on and just was embarrassing me and embarrassing me so I'm going to embarrass myself now and share this with all of you. It's not particularly windy, the Powell's flag there flying on the forward coach house roof of Broad Ambition, it's waving but it's not excessively windy. But can I get this boat lined up? No. So at this point I realise that things are not going very well at all. People are standing there looking at me. So I think, okay, I'll just more side on and block the dinghy dike. Great. What should I do? Back out. Go with a flourishing reverse turn that will get even more attention and then try for try number two. Try for try. Let's go for it. So here we are, we're backing out. Going to do our turn into the, the main broad. Go and compose yourself, Rob. 
you know you've got a few seconds now to to reassess the situation you know what way the wind is coming from you're knowing how this boat kind of handles very little keel under the boat on these bathtubs easily shiftable by the wind similar to if you've got a more of a high-sided flybridge type of boat so we're coming round now looking good it's just a matter of lining themselves up straightening the wheel taking into account that wind shift and backing in there's the dinghy dike and there's our spot next to the Hampton 25 from Summercraft. All going well, and then I take the power off. Why did you do that, Rob? Now you're just drifting like a duck in a bath. Now we're coming close to getting instructions from shore. She grabs the rope. But unfortunately, it's it's all lost. And by now, putting extra tension on that rope, we're just mooring side on again. So I move forward now. Yeah. And now they're pulling me back. I should know better, because I own the boat. It's too down. <laughs> I wish you'd have been like this. I am. <laughs> So yes, I can cook up like the best of us and it was embarrassing, but you know what? You know what this proves? You can get into a right pickle, but other people on the Norfolk Broads, other boat owners, holiday makers alike, they just come and see you in difficulty, give you a hand, and that's what makes boating on the Broads so good. And if you're a first timer, look, it's all right. You can mess up, you can have a laugh about it. Nothing's damaged, no one's hurt. So I thought I'd share this.